Hello, this is the BBC News with Fiona MacDonald. US investigators have arrested a 21-year-old National Guardsman suspected of leaking classified government documents in what's been described as one of the worst ever breaches of American intelligence. Jack Teixeira was the head of an online chat group on which the documents first emerged. A Pentagon spokesman called the leak a deliberate criminal act. Speaking to the BBC, the Republican Congressman Mike Turner, who chairs the House Intelligence Committee, gave his reaction to the arrest. We've long said that this individual needs to be brought to justice. This obviously was an act of espionage. It's great, of course, to hear that this is not a, a foreign adversary and this person is in hand. The leaks obviously will have stopped. We'll get a very good assessment of what he had access to and what documents he may have made public or provided to others and from that do a damage assessment and a mitigation that has to happen. President Biden has said the United Kingdom should work more closely with the Irish government to maintain peace in Northern Ireland. He was addressing the Irish Parliament, the first US president to do so in 30 years. Mr Biden said political violence should never be allowed to take hold again. Emma Vardy is in Dublin. He said, look, up in Northern Ireland, because there is no functioning government, power sharing's collapsed. He said American companies want to invest, but they are cautious because of the political instability. But down here in the Republic of Ireland, I think he struck a lot of the right notes that political leaders here would have wanted him to. I think it's a source of great national pride to have the president in town. I think his visit certainly would have strengthened those ties between Irish Americans and the Irish Republic. The most powerful storm to hit Western Australia in more than a decade has made landfall on the state's northern coast. Evacuation orders were issued ahead of Cyclone Ilsa's arrival. It reached shore as a Category 5 storm before being downgraded. Hundreds of thousands of people have been protesting across France in a long-running dispute over reforms that will see the pension age increase from 62 to 64. In Paris, 20, 10 police officers were injured in clashes with demonstrators and there have been around 30 arrests. Hugh Schofield reports from the French capital. For the last three months we've seen this kind of ritual being played out about once a week on the streets of Paris. The difference today is it's on the eve of what promises to be a crucial decision at the Constitutional Council, who are going to rule on whether this pension reform law is in conformity with the Constitution. The protesters here are hopeful that this Constitutional Council will strike the law down, or at least parts of it down. What the government hopes is that it'll give its imprimatur to the law. If it does, that means that the pension reform could become or be promulgated in the next couple of weeks. World News from the BBC. The M23 rebel group in eastern Congo have said that they will not disarm or demobilise as long as there is no direct political dialogue with the government in Kinshasa. A rebel spokesman, Lawrence Kanyuka, issued the statement on Twitter after the Congolese president, Felix Chisikedi, said there would be no political negotiations with the rebels. Mr Chisikedi said that the M23 rebels are expected to demobilise before returning to civilian life. The US state of Florida has passed a bill banning abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. The White House has described the measure as extreme and dangerous. The state's Republican-led House of Representatives backed the legislation, which is expected to be signed into law by Governor Ron DeSantis. Seventeen soldiers who were taken hostage in Colombia by indigenous protesters have been released in the southwestern department of Cauca. They were kidnapped on Wednesday after the army tried to arrest a member of the indigenous community. More from Latin America regional editor Phoebe Hobson. It was an ordeal that lasted ten hours. The soldiers were kidnapped after being sent to Cauca to arrest a member of the indigenous community who was accused of murder and making firearms. Video on social media showed them being led away by the Indigenous Guard organisation, which campaigns for Indigenous rights. After their release, the army said it would file a complaint against the hostage takers. The kidnapping of security forces is a common method of protest in Colombia. Last month, 80 police officers were held for two days by an Indigenous group in protest against an oil company. Turkey and Egypt have agreed to cooperate more closely over policies in Libya, following talks between their foreign ministers in Ankara. Both nations back opposing sides in the divided North African country. In a joint press conference, the two ministers said they would work on creating a roadmap for elections in Libya. BBC News.